In this section, we're going to look at knowledge management systems as well as other specialized information systems and how they're going to affect our daily lives in the near future. So we're going to focus on data information and knowledge, what we discussed in topic one. We're going to look at some of the roles involved in knowledge management systems, some of the tools and techniques we're going to use, and then we're going to turn our discussion to artificial intelligence and the effects that it would have on our jobs in the future. Now these are characterized by intelligent behavior, so we're going to look at various other systems that would typically influence um, AI systems. We're also going to talk about expert systems and then we're going to finish off our discussion by talking about multimedia and some of the technologies that's available to assist us. Now let's start off by looking at knowledge management systems or typically known as KMS. Now as we discovered in topic one, knowledge is the awareness and understanding of a set of information and the ways that information can be made useful to support specific tasks or goals. Now a knowledge management system can be described as a computer based information system with the aim of ensuring that the knowledge and experience in an organization is recorded. Now that takes us to some of the first definitions that we discovered in topic number one. Data versus information versus knowledge. Data can be classified as the raw facts. So it's typically anything that you want to record and that you would like to save in a database or in some sort of format. Now as soon as you give meaning to those raw facts then it typically becomes information. So it explains the situation and it gives meaning to your data. On the other hand knowledge identifies the actions needed to address certain situations and typically we, we can start to see patterns and relationships with information. For example if we look at the section at the bottom data could be classified as a number 20 a product and then perhaps a database information would be the store will run out of invent inventory in the week unless we're going to order more inventory and the knowledge is if we need to order inventory we need to go and call a specific number in order to contact our supplier and then they will come and restock our products. Now why do we need to look at knowledge management systems? These systems would typically help organizations to achieve their goals. Firms that use knowledge management systems are more innovative and they perform better and these systems store and process all of the knowledge that we need to gather and record. Now it's important to realize that these two types of knowledge knowledge can either be explicit or tacit. Explicit knowledge is those knowledge that's objective and that can be measured and typically we find it in the form of reports and papers and rules and guidelines. Whereas with tacit knowledge these are hard to measure and they are typically not objective or formalized. For example if I ask you give me an indication of everything that you know that would be classified as tacit knowledge. So you can't formally go and write it down. You need to give it to me perhaps in the form of essays or bullets or some sort of structure. Now we can use various tools to go and capture, create and share knowledge. For example, if we look at our types of knowledge, explicit versus tacit knowledge, explicit knowledge can be easily shared and used by accessing expert systems which is a type of system that we're going to talk about in one of the next few sections. If we want to use and share tacit knowledge, knowledge unique to individual, that can typically be done in the form of blog posts. And then if we want to discover new knowledge, we would need to look at tools such as data mining. But let's continue and talk about some of the users that we would find in knowledge management systems. 
First of all, we need to talk about knowledge workers. Now, these are people that create, use and disseminate knowledge. They are typically professionals in science, engineering, business and other areas. So these are your daily workers that need to go and create the knowledge for company. On the other hand, we might encounter what is known as a CKO or the Chief Knowledge Officer. This is usually a person that's at the top level executive range where they need to ensure that the organization actually makes use of a knowledge management system to create, store and use knowledge that will aid the system or the company in achieving its goals. Their tasks would include to take on the responsibility of the knowledge management systems. They would work with other executives to try to determine what knowledge is important for the company and what should be recorded. It's also important that these types of systems typically lead to additional knowledge creation, storage and sharing as well as usage. Now there's two definitions that we need to think about when we talk about knowledge management. The first one is known as COP or Community of Practice. Now this is a group of people that are dedicated to a specific discipline or a specific region. For example, if we talk about doctors in medicine, they can be classified as a health community of practice, so they have the same interests, the same jobs and requirements. On the other hand, we need to know about a knowledge repository. Now a knowledge repository is actually the same thing as a database. So we need to have a database or repository in order to save our knowledge. So we need to have that physical component to save it. Now let's continue and talk a little more about some of the aspects we need to consider. It's important to realize that knowledge can be critical for a company to maintain its competitiveness. Knowledge often leads to additional knowledge creation, storage, sharing and usage. We might find knowledge in non-technical approaches. Now these can be classified as your informal discussions, just your general get-togethers and talk, talks with people. Knowledge management system typically diminishes the reliance on paper-based reports, thereby reducing costs, because all of the knowledge would be available in electronic format. And then once knowledge is created, it is important to go and store it within a knowledge repository or knowledge database. Knowledge workers typically use group support systems to share knowledge. For example, if we think about a large organization, all the people in the organization might contribute to knowledge. So we again need to have collaborative software, we need to have groupware, and then that will aid them in going and creating the knowledge. Now, what is the process of knowledge? Knowledge will typically be created, then it will be saved, and then it will be shared to a lot of users. Once it's shared, they will start to use the knowledge, and we would find that there's a continuous process where knowledge usage would result in knowledge sharing, storage, and creation. Now, there's various technologies available that can aid us in working or supporting knowledge management systems. And a lot of these we've covered in previous topics. For example, data mining, business intelligence, ERP tools, groupware, wikis, as well as components of our information systems. Now, there's a few examples of knowledge management systems available, and these include Bloomfire, Communifier, Intelligence Bank, Moxie Knowledge Base, Oxion, as well as Smart Support. Now, these are just a few. Typically, you would find that depending on your organization and the type of decisions or work you need to do, that you're going to use specific systems. In our next section, we're going to start to talk about artificial intelligence and then all of the systems that makes up AI.